Today we are going to do partial fraction decomposition. And like I said, partial fraction decomposition is really important if you're going to go into calculus 1 and 2 specifically. Now you see it. It's very important. Partial fraction, I'm just going to say decomp decomposition. Um, for you guys, this is section 7.3. Um, and I'm going to go through three main scenarios. One, where we have linear factors in the denominator. Two, where we have repeated linear factors in the denominator. And three, quadratic factors. And if I have time, I'll do repeated quadratic factors or I'll do a mix, because you could have a combination of these also. Just depends. Um, so, all right. You have a, so first of all, actually, what is partial fraction decomposition? What are you really doing? Imagine, I'm, I'm going to go real basic here, okay? Imagine that I have 2x over, we'll just say x plus 3 plus 5 over x plus 5, right? So I'm adding two separate rational functions, correct? Or two fractions. And in order to add them, I need a common denominator, right? Adding rational functions. Oops, this one needs x plus 5 and an x plus 5. Um, so the idea for what I'm doing here, multiply, so 2x squared plus 10x, I'm going to go straight across the top, plus 5x plus 15, all over, that's a 15, this product x plus 5 times x plus 3, right? And then at the end of the day, combine my terms, 2x squared plus 15x plus 15, all over x plus 5 times x plus 3. So what did I just do, right? I took two fractions. These are called rational functions or rational expressions. I added them. I combined them into a single fraction. Partial fraction decomposition is going from this to this. I'm going from a single fraction, rational function, into a sum or difference of separate ones. I'm going in the opposite direction. That's what partial fraction decomposition is, going from the single to a sum or difference of separate. Okay, so how do I do that? Um, so the first example, you know, first of all, if your denominator is not factored, you want to factor it. This one is nice. It's already factored for me, so I don't really have an issue there. But if you look at the factors, they're both linear, right? They're both linear factors, and they're not repeated. I don't have any of them repeated. I only have one x minus 3, and I only have one x plus 4. So they're only repeated once. So I have non-repeated linear factors. When I have non-repeated linear factors, I'm going to um, say that this is equal to, I'm going to move this a little bit out of my way. Need some space. I'm going to say that this is going to be equal to the sum of separate fractions. Because that's what I want to do, partial fraction decomposition. One of the denominators is going, to x, is going to have an x minus 3, one of the linear factors, and the other denominator is going to have an x plus 4, the other linear factor. When you have linear factors in the denominator, and they're different, your numerators are constants. I don't know what constants they are, so an unknown a is there, and another unknown constant b is here. So I'm saying that this is going to be equal to a sum of separate fractions, you know, which have these denominators, which, you know, if I were to go in this direction, it would, you know, match this. But I have to figure out what these um, numerators are. So how do I figure out what the numerators are? I need to basically solve a rational ex uh, equation. Yeah. Yep. So, so someone asked me if the top, you know, degree is the one less than the bottom. You'll see that that is true. Because if it's a linear factor, the top is a constant. You'll see what happens when I have quadratic um, factors. So, yeah, I, I was going to get to that. The top is kind of one degree less than the bottom. But, you know, I'll get to that. But at, at the end of the day, when you have linear factors, right, um, the numerators are going to be constants. And, you know, I have a different constant per different linear factor. So now, to solve this, I need to solve a rational equation. I'm going to multiply everything times... The uh, LCD, the least common denominator, or the common denominator. And what that's going to do is going to cancel this. It's going to get rid of the fractions and give me a nice equation to solve. And when I multiply this by the 
you know, denominator, it cancels it. So I'm left with a 5x minus 1. When I multiply this by this, this is technically over 1, guys, right? So, you know, the x minus 3 is going to cancel. So I'm left with a times x plus 4. Plus, when I multiply this fraction by this fraction, the x plus 4s are going to cancel, and I'm left with a b times x minus 3. So I'm solving a rational equation, basically, to, to identify what a and b are so that I can represent this rational function as a sum of two separate ones. I'm going to decompose this, right? I'm going to take this single thing and make it a sum of difference. Um, so how do I solve this? Um, so let's distribute and compare each side. So I have ax plus 4 plus bx minus 3. Now the hard thing about this, or at least what initially seems hard or difficult or whatever, is that you have a bunch of unknowns. But if you look at this, right, on the left I have one linear term, which has a coefficient of 5. On the right I have two linear terms, coefficients of a and b. So imagine, you know, if these are like terms, I would combine them. And if this whole thing has to be equal to this whole thing, no, I made an error. Hold on. Nobody caught that, right? If I'm distributing A, I forgot my A and I forgot my B. So let me go back there with my distribution. AX plus 4 times A plus BX minus, so it's B times negative 3, right? So B3, 3B on it. <laughs> Okay, be careful. Obviously, that's a mistake that can happen. So, mistake number one, that can happen. Be careful. Now, again, if this expression is equivalent to this expression, then the coefficient of the x should match the coefficients here. So, I'm going to say that, well, a plus b has to be equal to 5 in order for that part to be true. Um, the constants, right? I have one constant term on the left, and I have two constant terms here. But if I combine these two constant terms, they must be the same as this one if I have an equivalent statement, an equal sign. Otherwise, the two expressions will not be equal. So I'm going to say, well, 4a minus 3b must be equal to negative 1. So now I have, what's this? Oh, look what popped up. A system of linear equations of two variables. Now, how do I solve that? Well, what do I have to do to solve this? I could use elimination. I could do substitution. It's a preference. I'm going to do elimination because how else do I solve for a and b um, without elimination or substitution? I have two unknowns, two equations. I'm going to multiply equation 1 by 3. So that means I get 3a plus 3b is 15. I'm going to multiply equation 2 by nothing. <laughs> And then add the two together, because at the end of the day, what am I eliminating? My b's. So now I have here 7a is equal to here 14. So now I know that a is 2. Now b is going to be easy to find. a plus b is 5. So 2 plus b is 5, and therefore b is 3. And now I know my partial fraction decomposition. I know that 5x minus 1 over this is equal to 2 over x minus 3 plus 3 over x plus 4. If I were to combine these two fractions with the common denominator and all that, I should end up with this. Okay? Again, like I said, what is partial fraction decomposition? I'm going from the single fraction into a sum or difference of sep separating it. Um, so you can always check a result by combining them back. Does it equal that single you know, fraction. Now, you know, you can see here, you got a combination of stuff. You have to not only obviously know what to do when you have linear factors and know how to factor, right? That's one method. It's one thing you have to know how to factor. Another thing that you have to know is how to identify linear factors versus other factors. Um, you have to know how to solve a rational equation. You have to know how to solve a system of equations. And depending on how many unknowns I have, it could be a system of two, three, Four variables, later on you'll see stuff like that. Right now you did two or three. So there's a combination of old material combined just to do this. But the end result is a summer difference of separate fractions that if I were to combine into a single one, would go back into that. That's what partial fraction decomposition is all about.